Spartan warriors stand along the shores of Greece, taunting the Athenian troops aboard their naval ships. Athens controls the water, but the fierce and deadly Spartan army continues to dominate on land. Blood is spilled across Greece as the Peloponnesian War rages on. Spies and assassins stalk the streets of every major city. A plague runs rampant through urban centers decimating populations. And in the end, Sparta will turn to Greece's most hated enemy for help. But will it be enough? The year is 550 BCE, Sparta, Corinth, Elis, and Tegea ally, the likes of which have never been seen in Greece. The group of city-states calls themselves the Peloponnesian League. They control much of southern Greece, including the Peloponnese region, where the League takes its name from. The leadership has an understanding that they will work together to oppose any outside aggressors trying to infiltrate their territory. The alliances between the members of the League are tentative at best and more of a convenience than anything else. However, in the years to come, the members of the Peloponnesian League will band together to combat a growing threat arising just outside their borders. Sparta is the de facto leader of the League and uses it to quell uprisings that arise within their territory. Its warriors are known around the ancient world for their precision and deadly tactics. Myths and epics have been written about their exploits, the most famous of which is the Battle of Thermopylae, where Leonidas and his 300 Spartan warriors gave their lives to slow the onslaught of Persian soldiers invading Greece and allowing the rest of the city-states to gather their forces and mount a successful defense. In 478 BCE, one of the greatest threats to Sparta's dominance arises. It's during this time that the Delian League begins to take shape. Athens sets out with its powerful navy to free eastern Greek cities from Persian rule. Once liberated, the territories and isles across the Aegean ally themselves with Athens, and the Delian League becomes a major power in the region. Athens secured several more victories in Marathon, Salamis, and Plataea, the city-states banded together to protect one another from any future Persian aggression. The Delian League continues to grow in strength and size. Over 300 cities are now under the control of Athens, with huge amounts of tribute coming in from the territories that they liberated and an increased pool of soldiers to pull from. Athens became as powerful, if not more powerful, than Sparta. It looks to expand its empire and influence across Greece. Athens requires all members of the Delian League to provide tribute in the form of money, ships, and men. It utilizes these vast resources to stand up to Sparta and the Peloponnesian League. In the coming years, a series of small conflicts will ignite an all-out war between the two powers, and only one can come out victorious. Just before 460 BCE, two Peloponnesian League city-states found themselves at odds with one another. A dispute between Megara and Corinth has escalated. Sparta has closer ties to Corinth and offers assistance, but Athens takes note of the internal conflict within the Peloponnesian League and decides to use it to their advantage. The leaders of Athens begin backing Megara in an attempt to sway the city into joining the Delian League, or at the very least weaken Sparta's hold on the area. Megara forms closer ties to Athens. This development does not go unnoticed by the Spartans. The Athenians have been expanding their sphere of influence, and now they are claiming Spartan territory as their own. And those spies that are lurking in Athenian cities soon become a big problem. That's right, even in ancient times, bad actors were probing and prodding into private domains. But they didn't have anyone to protect their data, and spies and informants reported back to the Spartan leadership that Athens had been pouring resources into improving their naval capabilities. Soon their naval might will be unmatched by any other in the region. But it's one construction project in particular that catches Sparta's eye. If completed, it could make Athens siege-proof. The Athenians are constructing their long walls between Athens and the ports of Piraeus and Phaleron. The Athenian leaders know their navy is formidable, and it is highly unlikely that any of their adversaries would successfully be able to blockade their ports. This means that even if a hostile army is outside the walls of the city, Athens will still be able to receive supplies from Piraeus and Phaleron via the long walls. The construction and refurbishment of these structures signal to the Spartans that Athens is getting ready for war soon. In 460 BCE, the Athenians are close enough to Corinth's borders that the city-state could no longer ignore the Delian League threat. A series of battles breaks out between Corinth and Athens, marking the beginning of the First Peloponnesian War. As a result, several members of the Peloponnesian League sent troops to aid Corinth. Sparta remains out of the conflict for the most part. The Corinthian warriors and their allies repel Athenian attacks and eventually push them out of their territory. However, while the Athenian army is not faring so well on land, their navy continues to grow in strength and size. The Athianas control the seas, launching several campaigns to claim islands and coastal towns around the Aegean. They even send part of their fleet to Egypt to increase their influence in the area. Over the next decade, a series of battles are fought around Greece as members of the Peloponnesian League and Delian League try to expand their borders. Even though Sparta has been offering minimal support thus far, 
Athenian forces are encroaching on Spartan-controlled territories. Sparta ramps up its involvement in the conflict and begins dominating the land battles across Greece. In 457, they defeat Athenian forces at Tanagra. Both sides take heavy losses, and the decisive Spartan victory results in both armies returning home rather than continuing their campaign. While there is a break in the fighting, Athens approaches Argos, one of the main threats to Sparta's dominance over the Peloponnesian League. This is cause for alarm and puts the Spartan leadership on high alert. While Sparta keeps an eye on Argos and the Delian League as a whole, the Athenian navy launches a series of campaigns to attack the coastal regions of the Peloponnese, but Athens has stretched their forces too thin. Their ships and soldiers in Egypt are crushed by the Persian army. In 454, the treasury of the Delian League moves to Athens, solidifying the city's dominance. This allows Athens to control the finances of the League and pour money into their own campaigns. Following their defeat in Egypt and the restructuring of the Delian League, Athens reduces the number of campaigns it launches into Peloponnesian League territory. In order to give Athens time to finalize its plans for an empire, they seek a truce with Sparta. In 446 BCE, the Thirty Years' Peace Treaty is established between Athens and Sparta. Unfortunately, the peace will only last a fraction of that time. Just over ten years after the peace treaty was signed, Athens takes the first step towards resuming hostilities. Athens has gathered its strength and enacted strict tributary policies on other members of the Delian League in their territories. Athens continues to grow its army and navy. All the while, Sparta keeps watch on the growing threat to the northeast. In 433, Athens forges an alliance with Corsera, one of Corinth's most important colonies. Athens sends forces to Corsera, where fighting breaks out between Athenian and Corinthian forces. The following year, in 432 BCE, Sparta and its allies in the Peloponnesian League accuse Athens of breaking the Thirty Years' Treaty and begin to prepare for war.